Let's go to Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan. Anybody been to Tokyo, Japan? Let's go. This is the owner and CEO of the largest candy company in Japan. His great grandfather left Japan in, I think, 1920s, went to America, to San Francisco, and learned how to make candy after somebody gave him a piece of candy. In Japan, no candy up until then. Now he has a multi billion dollar candy corporation. And they're in a lot of other activities, too. I asked him, his name is Gota Morenaga Sun. I asked him, how old is your company? And he said, 115 years old now. Grandfather, father, now son. 115 years. That's important to me because the percentage, and that's how it's misspelled, out of 1,000 new businesses, 40% fail in the first year. 80% fail before five years. If you make it to five years, 80% of those fail before they make it to 10 years. So the result, only 4% of new businesses are around after 10 years. If you can make it to 10 years, okay. You're doing well. So I'm thinking, why did you make it to 115 years? And anybody who makes it over 10, I want to know, what's your secret? What do you do so that your leadership is sustainable? It doesn't come and go, because we see a lot of restaurants. They come and they go. We see a lot of businesses. You come to their address, they're not there. So what is one of the secrets? I want to know his secret. He said, my secret to longevity, that sustainability, is justice. Justice for the employee, justice for customer, and our partners. Using the key concept of Bushido, this is the way of the warrior, the samurai, the samurai. He said that business is like waging war, but the samurai in business has different weapons. Loyalty, justice, personal honor, devotion to duty, and courage. He said this is his most important strategy and his great-grandfather's important strategy about how to stay in business, how to continue business. So there's something soft about continuing business. My associate, Fred Keel, wrote a book a long time ago about moral intelligence. I wrote a book similar about becoming the professional human being who uses all the weapons of a samurai. Everyone always asks, but if that's the case, do you make money? If you're the nice guy, the nice woman, are you making money? Well, he did a six-year study on character. How do we know about character? The direct reports know everything about their supervisor, about the CEO, about the owner of the company, the direct reports, and the customer, and the vendors. They know everything. So he researched those people about CEOs of, I think, about 1,000 companies. What he noticed is those who had great character had a 9.35% return on assets, profit. Those who were self-focused, 1.93% to zero. So if you saw the person who did illegal things, he's now in jail. He um, stole billions of other people's money until he was caught. And now he's in jail for life. That's the 
zero percent. People ask, what is good character? How can I get good character in my business? First, you have to model the good character, and secondly, hire people who have good character. What is that? Well, in his research, he found four things. One, integrity. In every country, integrity is important. <laughs> Creating harmony between what we believe and how we act. Do you keep your promises? Following through, doing what we know is right, no matter what. Doing what we know is right. I left a company in Hawaii, and if you get a chance to go to Hawaii, take it. Take the chance. <laughs> the company is called Castle and Cook, and I asked everybody about the CEO. And they said, he doesn't allow us to do anything that seems to be wrong. He has integrity. Responsibility. Admitting mistakes and failure, that means yours, not others, <laughs> yours, and embracing responsibility for serving other people. If you were in my presentation about professional human being, great leaders don't set out to be great, they set out to serve. So this is the responsibility. Forgiveness, cooperation, mediation of conflict, empathy, you've heard these terms. Letting go of mistakes of others and one's own mistakes. I took two years of counseling psychology, master's degree. One of the most important things is self-forgiveness. I called it the slayer of all demons. Forgive you for everything. God does, why don't you? Catch up to him or her. Compassion, helping people develop. You have an interest and compassion for people to develop. Actively caring about others. Just simple stuff of being human. This is character. Open, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and aversion to don't have aversion to risk or fear. Feel it and do it anyway is, is the uh, concept. So this is return on character. You can make money if you have character. Proven now not a theory, but a scientific fact. You can read it in Return on Character. It's now published just recently. We are an emotional economy, and we're all in social industries, so guess what kind of intelligence we need? There are three kinds of intelligence. I call them integrative intelligence. Also, I call it spiritual intelligence. Emotional intelligence, social intelligence, moral intelligence. These are the kinds of intelligence that are going to take us into the future. Digital age, beyond digital age. They're always the foundations of success. What's emotional intelligence? The ability to identify and manage your own emotions and help other people manage theirs when they're out of control. Social intelligence, form rewarding relationships with other people. And moral intelligence, do the right, I'm sorry, I'll go back. Did you get it? You, had to, you got, okay, there you go. Moral intelligence, the capacity to understand right from wrong and behave based on that value when you believe that's the right thing to do. Patricia Aberdeen, she's a predictor of megatrends coming up. So she wrote a book called Megatrends 2010, several years ago, predicting this digital age. She called it conscious capitalism. What happens in conscious capitalism? Well, businesses are starting to be more spiritual, letting people take care of themselves, not draining their energy, not burning them out. They honor all stakeholders. They lead from the middle. That means on moral authority, all managers should let others lead when it's appropriate. And spirituality in business. We have to have spirit. It has to relate to my purpose. The purpose of the company and its values 
have to coincide with mine. They have to compare. A values-driven consumer. People are buying from people who don't pollute the environment, who give back to their community, who give their employees a good salary, uh, who treat their vendors properly. This is called the values-driven consumer. People on, within businesses now have forgiveness programs, meditation programs, and forgiveness training, which I never thought would happen, but it's happening. And then people want to buy from and invest in these businesses that are conscious. They have conscious capitalism. Here's an example of conscious capitalism. This example is an immigrant in the United States. He came with nothing 10 years ago, zero money. He made some money and then decided, he saw an article that, hey, there's a yogurt factory for sale. He went to the Small Business Administration and he got a loan, he bought it. Today, he has 3,000 employees. It's worth four to five billion dollars. And on this day, he gave his employees 10% of his business. That means each employee now has one to two hundred thousand dollars each. One to two hundred thousand, which, who does this? This is a guy who knows, who has character, and who is living conscious capitalism. Cares for his employees, spends money on refugees, and has spent $2 million a year for Syrian refugees, helping them. He hasn't forgotten. He's from Turkey, and he's Kurdish. So they treated him badly in Turkey, and that's why he came to the US. Last thing I will tell you, character is a skill, not a gift. You can learn to behave with character. Leading is a skill, not a gift. You can learn how to lead, or this whole conference would have been a waste of time. And lastly, we can all develop character and the ability to lead in this era of conscious capitalism. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.